Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yesudian, a consultant dermatologist based in the UK. In this video, I would like to review a condition called prurigo pigmentosa, also known as keto rash. It's an entity that is possibly missed by dermatologists and physicians as it's relatively new. The reason we need to be aware of it is because of its association with dietary fashions, particularly the keto diets, which is particularly popular at present. Prurigo pigmentosa was first described in 1971 by a Japanese dermatologist called Nagashima and his colleagues. The condition subsequently appeared in the English literature in 1978 when it was published in the Journal of Dermatology. It's an inflammatory dermatosis characterized by a recurrent itchy rash that resolves with net-like pigmentation. It's most frequently reported in young women, typically of East Asian origin, more recently, however, it has been reported in all ages, sexes, and ethnicities due to the popularity of the keto diets. Metabolic conditions that are associated with prurigo pigmentosa include dieting, diabetic ketoacidosis, anorexia nervosa, nutritional deficiency, and bariatric or weight loss surgery. In all these metabolic states, there is an increase in ketone synthesis in the liver, resulting in elevated levels of ketone bodies. Ketone bodies then accumulate around the blood vessels, resulting in perivascular inflammation, thereby causing the rash. Resuming a balanced diet or initiating insulin treatment reduces ketone levels and helps in the resolution of the lesions, whereas an increase in ketone levels is associated with the recurrence of the rash. Interestingly, in recent years, there's been an increased use of the term keto rash on online forums media and discussion groups. This suggests that we are potentially under-diagnosing prurigo pigmentosa. Let's remind ourselves what a ketogenic diet is. It consists of reducing the carbohydrate content in the diet, usually to less than 50 grams per day, while increasing the fraction of fat and protein intake. There's increasing interest in this diet because of its beneficial effects in weight control, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Prurigo pigmentosa most commonly presents in the back, the chest, and the neck. Its progression is subdivided into three stages, early, fully developed, and late, each of which is distinguished by unique clinical and histological features. Early stage prurigo pigmentosa manifests as itchy red papules and flocks. Fully developed lesions present with crusted red papules and blisters. Lastly, Late stage prurigo pigmentosa is characterized by the appearance of smooth surface pigmented patches. The evolution from early to fully developed lesions occurs within just a few days. The fully developed lesions subsequently resolve within one week, leaving behind pigmented marks that usually persist for several months. Increasing sweating and rubbing aggravates the condition. This entity is commonly misdiagnosed, delaying treatment by months or years. Lesions may be mistaken for eczema or contact dermatitis. However, eczema responds to topical and systemic steroids, whereas prurigo pruriginosa does not. If contact dermatitis is suspected, patch testing can be done. Prurigo pigmentosa may also be confused with another condition called confluent and reticulated papillomatosis, but these lesions are usually thicker and more papillomatous lesions. Minocycline or doxycycline tends to be the first-line therapy for prurigo pigmentosa. Excellent results have also been achieved with macrolide antibiotics like erythromycin and with dapsone. Treatment with tetracyclines and other antibiotics may be effective, partly because they inhibit the inflammatory changes in the skin. However, residual hyperpigmentation may persist even after the resolution of prurigo pigmentosa. One consideration when treating patients is to reconstitute a balanced diet as an adjunct to the medical therapies. Increasing carbohydrate intake along with avoidance of fasting may be beneficial. Wearing comfortable clothing, particularly cotton, whilst exercising, showering immediately after the exercise to remove the sweat and dust, and finally adjusting our workout regime may also be useful. So what are the take-home points? Firstly, let's consider prurigo pigmentosa in any new onset rash, particularly in those undertaking weight loss diets 
or if they have other metabolic conditions that we've discussed before. Dietary questioning, especially regarding carbohydrate intake and exclusion, becomes a key factor in the diagnosis. We can reassure our patients of the harmless nature of this condition and offer a non-pharmaceutical treatment plan. This is particularly important in the current era where there is great emphasis on natural treatment modalities and avoidance of prescription medications. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.